Hi, this is Dr. Snootopia, and this is Lovolution Village. Lovolution, I'm going to be talking about my vision of Lovolution today. Sometimes it's very hard for me to believe in myself. I think, as a visionary, perhaps that is the most difficult thing to do is just to believe in one's vision and to work towards it no matter what. What I have discovered is that not many people are going to listen to what I have to say or follow my suggestions of my inner truth because that's where visions come in is one's inner truth. Oops. And that's why they're visions. Sometimes visionaries can receive a vision through a dream. My vision started happening when I was about 21 and it was the Cold War era. I did not like the way the United States was involved with buildings, weapons of mass destruction, and being the target of Soviet weapons of mass destruction. What a way to grow up. I even read a book during that period that said that how can even people begin to even grow up when there's this suicidal wish that it's going on that was happening during the Cold War. So because of this uh, trauma that I was faced with and so many other people were faced with but seemed oblivious to this fact, I started thinking about what we could do with all of that, those resources, the money that was going into the Cold War. And what kind of world could we build with that? if we directed our energies towards peace and not nuclear holocaust. And there were other people thinking about these ideas. I went to one conference about a feminist economy that was all about uh, creating peace with our money. And there were many other conferences and conversations I had that were also talking about this peace conversion and what that means is moving technologies that are used for war into building a new world. Well while I was doing this I was in school in Washington DC at a small woman's college called Mount Vernon College and I would sit in my dorm room after I re went and got a Washington Post and I cut out all these articles on the nuclear arms race. When my friends came to visit me I would bring out my newspaper clippings and put them on the floor and after a while, I had a hundred articles about how we were building these weapons that could destroy the planet. My friends would look at me and they'd go, why are you thinking about that? Uh, we're not thinking about that. Have fun. Let's go out to a party. And I just couldn't feel that way. The opposite emotion that I was feeling at the time, I was young, like 20, 21, and I was very interested about the other power, and that is the power of love, particularly the power between the sexes. What was that power? How does it function? How do you know when it's true or when it's false love? I was living through the sexual revolution at that time, and it was like, hey, whoever you're with, have sex with. And, of course, that led to a lot of diseases and um, unwanted pregnancies. So it really wasn't that 
happy or did women feel that liberated? At least I didn't. So I'm going to start uh, this slideshow by thinking about these ideas in this liberation arcology movement. That's what I am calling this quest to build the city of love and that is a liberation movement. This is the erotic element of life. And you understand that it is so critical that we understand what love is. And I'm not just talking about um, fake love. I'm talking about true love that is also attached to justice and which is a, underlying all this is the ha quest to build sustainability and the love for living with clean air and water. So what is arcology? Here is an example of an arcology that was drawn by Paolo Soleri's team. And they write that arcology is a container for conscious evolution, 20th century integrated living container, greater complexity, freedom, and order. So when you have this new container, arcology is the fusion of architecture and ecology. You have more freedom because of the complexity of the structure and that is created through a new order. This is a whole systems design which means that it's integrated architecture. It integrates all the various parts of a city together in order to create this more efficient living organism. It's compact pedestrian human ecology, which means that you can walk around the arcology. You do not need a car. And then for living a healthy lifestyle, we need the organic agriculture. And this is not just organic foods for the few. And that's what we're seeing now in this country. Those who can afford to eat organics so they don't get the pesticides and they don't get the neurotoxins that are causing children to be dumber because it affects their brain. I was just reading an article about this today. Neurotoxins in pesticides can cause uh, children to have lower IQs. Now that's a serious problem. And those affected by these neurotoxins the most are low income children. Their families don't have the money to feed them organic foods. And this is morally wrong. It's morally wrong that anyone has to eat poison. And that's what's occurring in this country. Cradle to cradle pollution free industry. And what that is, is industries that are designed to either contain the pollution, the toxic waste, or makes biodegradable products so it does not pollute the ecology. Arcology is like living in Biosphere 2. For those of you here in Tucson who have visited Biosphere 2, if you recall when that was a closed container, they could not use any products that had any toxic chemicals in them or let out toxic gases because everything is recycled in a container. 
if we are living in an outer space habitat, the same principles apply. And this week, I actually heard a lecture that was given in, I think it was uh, New York City, uh, Neil Tyson um, was given the, uh, was hosting this debate and they were talking about industries now that are making habitats to go into outer space. Now again, those people who are going to be able to go into outer space and join a space colony, right now it's the rich who would have that potential. And that is immoral, especially when these industries are polluting the Earth, our spaceship Earth, which we all share the same water and air and then for them to start to think about colonizing outer space for the rich is immoral. Gaia's cosmic solar energy economics. And what I mean by this is we go completely solar, whether it's using wind power or solar power, we need to use renewable energies. And here in Arizona, we certainly can do that. Zero carbon eco city car free zone. So an arcology has a pedestrian orientation and it is designed to be zero carbon. And this is what we need. Arcology is something we need to save us from destroying our climate. And that's why I feel so passionate about it and why I have been dealing with these ideas for so long. Because I don't see any other way for us to be able to survive in peace on this planet with the ecology without this new container. So how do we do that? Also, it's the longevity of structure, which means that we're designing for a thousand years. This is no five-year plan. This is long-term thinking. So I think that we do this through love-evolution. Love-evolution is the evolution of revolution, a nonviolent world movement for social freedom and economic justice, fusion of erotic energies for world peace, and this is a very key point. How do we fuse those erotic energies for world peace? Especially when young people who have more of their hormones going and this attraction for each other than older people, how do we harness that youth energy so that we can have a mass movement for this ethical perspective? The, collection action, the collective action of love, building a network of arcologies on Earth and in outer space. So Lovolution is a, the revolution of nonviolence. And there's other people that are talking about similar ideas to this. Uh, the Lovolution. And why I feel so much frustration about this idea is because all over the world now there are uprisings. The people are fed up with the capitalist model. It doesn't work for most people. This is a scene from the Cairo revolution, that Egyptian revolution that is continuing to take place and getting bloodier and bloodier and bloodier, I feel, because they don't have the goal of rebuilding a city designed for 
their population that is living unsustainably next to a desert, their answer is to start building arcology. And how do I get that message to the revolutionaries? That you cannot have a revolution without a revolutionary city design. You have to change the lifestyle of the people. That is what the ecologists are saying that we must do. And we can do it with unity. So back to this love thing. These, this is from a temple in India. And it was said that if you have harmony between the sexes, then you can have all this other diversity of sexuality, as well as having this cosmic connection with creation. And also another uh, Indian image or image from India, and you see this character is both masculine and feminine. And we, this is such a movement today that we are gender bending and people are changing their genders, trying to find a way out of the deadlock of what they called heteronormalcy. <clears throat> what I would like to see happen with these ideas is that we become the state of Arizona starts to build an arcology. Now Dr. Paulo Soleri, he is the architect who has envisioned this form of architecture. He tried to create his model at Arcosanti, which is in central Arizona. He was a world famous architect, but the idea of arcology has not been built yet. There have been other countries who have been interested in that, this idea and have adopted some of the arcology principles, like China, like uh, in Dubai, there is an experiment. But we here in the United States have not taken it on because we are so addicted to oil, as George Bush said, and this, quote, love affair we have with the automobile is stopping us from really thinking about the problems in a way that looks at all the problems together and then comes up with a new solution, which to me is that container, is the arcology container. And for this arcology to happen, the, the Arcology Arizona, um, I see that we need a new labor force building arcology. What it means is that we switch directions of what our labor does now. We have the union of building new containers in order to save us from global climate change and also so that we can explore outer space. That will require all of us to be in unity about the blueprints for the future. Quite a task, isn't it? Because there's so many people who have various belief systems and they have been affected with different cultural memes. That's a, an idea. And they will fight to the death to protect their religion or their way of doing things when it's just a dead end anyway. So my idea is this uh, surplus wealth that we have here in this country. You know, our surplus is so great. I went to a movie that was sponsored by the uh, food co-op here in Tucson. And it was called 
dive. And it was about the filmmaker who started d dumpster diving for food. And there was just so much food that he couldn't even deal with it. He was starting to give it away to the people who needed it most, the poor people. The fact is that 30 to 50 percent of food that we produce goes into the landfills. It just gets wasted. Now what can we do with that surplus wealth is that we could feed people, create a volunteer army to build our ecology. So that's what I mean by surplus wealth. We have the surplus to change the direction of the ecology. That means giving a new focus for the construction energy industry, which is the labor unions. And then the architecture. That's the intellectual capital. People, uh, intellectuals coming together to work out the physics of our ecology, the engineering of our ecology, the science needed to make this thing work, and also the social sciences to make it egalitarian, and then the political sciences to make it into a, a constitutional democracy that allows the individual rights, basic human rights, and then we need the economists to come to give us a new economic system that is uh, electronic so that it runs fairly. And Solari's vision is for automated labor, which we can do now. So arcology becomes a creative enterprise of building the most innovative city ever created. And I think that we have the capability to do this in the United States. <clears throat> so what, how do we do this? How do we get that erotic energy working in this new direction? Well, I've been looking at the whole gay rights movement because they've been so successful in, um, in turning around their situation of oppression, feeling oppression. So I'm saying this is the army of Lovelution. This is not, this is a, not only a gay agenda of doing, building our ecology, but it's a human agenda of building our ecology. It's, it's both, uh, it's both. And then we have a different relationship with children and with uh, the new reproductive technologies. Because what we're living now is this nuclear family lifestyle, the individual house, nuclear family house, and the nuclear weapons industry, plutonium economy, nuclear energy, nuclear waste, which we, we don't know what to do with, nuclear recycled materials, which you need a Geiger counter to even know if you're being exposed to, food irradiation, which takes out the nutrients of food, and nuclear medicine, once you get the cancers because of all this nuclear waste around you. And this equals a cycle of death denial, burial, and possible extinction. So we're moving from the nuclear family house into the arcology. Well, I want to thank people for listening to this. I'm still in development. I don't think I'll ever finish with this vision but you are now part of it, and thank you so much.